What's happening guys, it's the Miami Football Fanatic here again. Glad you guys could join me here for another Dolphins video. And today, we're going to be doing another mock draft. Um, haven't done for a, haven't done a mock draft for a while, but there's been... Um, I mean, there hasn't been a ton of movement in the draft boards. I mean, it's, some guys have crept up, you know, a couple of edge players and uh, and linebackers, especially Devin Bush, as you can see here. But I knew he was going first round, but... Um, after the combine and the pro day, we've had much more time to gather information on these guys and just, you know, just get a good feel of what kind of player they are. So this mock draft that I'm doing right here, which I think is 3.0, I'm pretty sure, is going to be the most accurate to date. And uh, I'm going to have a better feel and an idea for, you know, who these players are. And I'm sure you guys will too. So uh, make sure to always uh, leave that feedback in the comments section. But uh, yeah, let's get started with the video. So as you can see, uh, as you can see here, the um, mock draft has already started. Uh, Kyler Murray, Nick Bosa, Jonah Williams. I'm sure the Jets won't be taking that early, but Ed Oliver, Brian Burns, Josh Allen, Quinn and Williams, DK Metcalf. So yeah, all that looks pretty accurate. But I really don't see uh, Christian Wilkins going that early, and I'm sure that DK Metcalf, Metcalf or who knows? Someone might reach for him there because he's such a he's such a physical beast. He really could be the next Calvin Johnson. But uh, other than that, looks pretty accurate. So starting here with the Dolphins, obviously, you know our biggest need at the moment is qu is quarterback. But you know I am a fan of Haskins. I love his his throw in motion, his quick release, and just his his accuracy. Um, but honestly, I really don't think that he's he's you know. The guy, the guy who's going to be the guy to... I know in previous videos I have said that I think he can be, you know, a great uh, franchise quarterback, a guy that can carry an offense and make the guys around him better, which I'm sure he might develop to... He might develop into in the league, but I really would rather, you know, a true, like... I mean, you really don't know when you're picking these guys, but a guy that's going to have a much better chance to carry the franchise, someone like a, like a Tua... Or maybe a Jake from, or um, you know Justin Herbert's kind of a bit up there at the moment. But okay, so let's get back to the pick. But I'm pretty much just making my case for why um, I really do not want to be picking Dwayne Haskins here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and skip him. Okay, so obviously our biggest needs are offensive line and you know anywhere on the D line, especially defensive line. I mean. Really, at the moment, our best D end is Charles Harris, so that's really saying a lot. So, we really need to come away with a elite edge rusher here, and I really do think that that is Montez Sweat. I'll show you guys his stats, but you could just see at the combine. I mean, his size 6'5, 260. He does say 245 here, but he did measure in. Um, he was 255 at uh, the Senior Bowl, and then he was 260 at the Combine. But as you can see there, just look at that production. But I mean, he, he was 6'5", 6'6", 260, and he ran he ran a 4'4", and just his explosion. And I think his uh, his 10 yard split was like 1.5 seconds or something, just something off the charts. And just the way he dominated, you know, certain tackles at the Pro Bowl. I mean, he put Andre Dillard on his ass a couple times and was just dominating. I really do think. He'd be a great guy. I mean, Cleveland Farrell, he'd be, he'd be a solid option. But you know, he's not the same dynamic athlete. I'm going Montez Sweat here. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys like Rashawn Gary, or you'd rather, um, you know, get a corner like the Andre Baker or Brian Murphy, something like that. But Montez Sweat, I really do think he's going to be incredibly similar to Daniel Hunter, the defensive end from. Uh, the Vikings, and he's just the kind of blue chip talent that we need to get in these first three rounds. So, Montez Sweat, bang, has filled a need there for us. I mean, I'm sure we could have maybe have gotten def a defensive end here in the second round, but that just opens the board up more for us moving forward. You might be able to get a nice offensive lineman here. Okay, so hopefully, here, what I want here is. A talented guard. Someone... Oh, there goes Michael Dider. But, hmm. All right, let's have a look at the board. Okay, so we've got Chris Lindstrom, Michael Jordan. What tackles have we got here? David Edwards at center. Alton Jenkins. 
Eric McCoy. Hmm. Jeffrey Simmons. As I said in my previous video, um, my last video, if you guys want to check that out, was our uh, possible guys that we can get in the second round. And I did bring up Jeffrey Simmons, but that's just a gamble that we cannot take. We, you know, we're not a, we don't have a solid, a solid culture and a solid, you know, winning team at the moment to to take a chance on a on a Jeffrey Simmons like a team like uh, New England could. So, got to pass on that. But let's go back to this pick. Okay, so hmm, corners. A lot of talented guys here. My two favourite are Rocky Sin and uh, Joe Juan Williams. Let's have a look at it. Okay, so we've got Jeffrey Simmons there at centre. Alton Jenkins. Uh, too bad Garrett Brad Bradbury isn't there. Uh, Chris Lynch didn't tackle. Tight end. Receiver. Oh, AJ Brown. Debo and Riley Ridley. They are very... Um, Tempting right here, but we got to build the base of the team, and I think that the thing to do here would be to take Alton Jenkins. Um, played well for Mississippi State. I think he started the last two or three years. I'm not really sure, but um, just watching his tape, you can see he's a solid center. But he's a guy who is uh, he's versatile. He can play anywhere on the inside of the line, and uh, that's exactly what we need. I mean, besides Larry Tunsil. We really do have nothing, you know, without a starting O-line. I mean, Jesse Davis is there, but, you know, he's no... He's no Lane Johnson or anything, so... Um, we really got to build that talent base of the offensive line, and um, Brian Flores did say that, that it's going to be one of their... You know, it could be a smoke screen, who knows, but, you know, it's... I mean, logic would tell you that we need offensive linemen, but... Um, he did highlight Co Coach Flores that we do need um, to get some offensive linemen in this draft. So hopefully they go through with that. Okay, so let's have a look at quarterback. We got Real Greer there. Mm, that is, I'd probably want that to be the pick there because I think that he'd be a nice, um, talented piece to add to the to the quarterback room. I don't want to have scrubs like like Jake Rudock and you know no offense to Luke Falk, but I don't think he can turn into a a Pro Bowl quarterback. Um, and Ryan Fitzpatrick, I mean those guys, they're not world beaters by any stretch of the imagination. I and mean, the only guy that that's a backup in that with those three is Ryan Fitzpatrick. So you know we can't be going around relying on uh, those guys. So Will Greer really would make sense here. Ooh, Jonathan Abram. Incredibly tempting here. He's one of my favorites in this draft. He's a he reminds me of a a smaller version of um uh oh damn it now his name's escaping my mind. The safety that uh, the Chargers took last year. Um so tackle Titus Howard. I'm a fan of Titus Howard. Um, hmm. I'm sure if if Akeem Butler was there, I would have taken him. But, uh, hmm. oh, I really do want to stick to, to building the uh, foundation of the team. Right here, I want to take Titus out. I mean, I know I could have taken Will Greer there. There's a n number of other guys I could have taken. Jonathan Abram was very, incredibly tempting there. But we're going to have three safeties this, this season, heading into the season. And I'm sure there's going to be more talented guys coming to the draft next year with the, with the 2020 draft. Some more solid safeties that can replace uh, TJ and, and Rashad Jones. But Titus Howard, he's a guy that played, I think he played right tackle for Alabama. But... He's an incredibly talented guy. I know uh, Bucky Brooks is a fan of him, but he's a very fluid athlete. He's got he's got strong hands, and I just I love the way. I just love his pass sets as a as a uh, as a tackle, and uh, he does a great job. Uh, you know, pulling on run blocks because he's such a he's such a great mover. Okay, so oh DeAndre Walker, he'd be. 
he's a guy that he's a he's a three four um outside linebacker and I think he'd be perfect in our new scheme. Ooh, Jalen Ferguson's still here. <laughs> Ooh. Kalen Saunders. Okay, so here we are in the fourth round. We got Montez Sweat, hopefully is a elite rusher. Alton Jenkins, a great lineman, and Titus Howard, a nice uh, a nice piece that should be able to slide in at at right tackle. Hmm. Okay. So looking at our needs, we got quarterback. We need a guard, but Alton Jenkins will will fill that. Kalen Saunders. Let's have a quick look at his uh, <clears throat> at his stats. So he had seven sacks and then six sacks. So two tackles. Hmm. Intriguing. <laughs> if I took the Andre Walker, this would be an all trench um, draft, which I'm not opposed to. I'd love to take the Andre Walker or, or Jalen Ferguson here, which would be a smart thing to do. Let's have a look at the quarterbacks. Okay, so Brett Rippon, running backs, wide receiver. Hmm. You know what? Because they're still, because he's still available, and I think that he's going to be tremendous in the league. Hmm, let's have a look at the linebackers. Hmm. You know what? Because he's still available, and I think that he's going to be. Hmm. See, this is a big toss-up between. Let's have a look at the Andre Walker stats. Because you know we really don't have any defensive ends on the team, and I think that. Any one of these guys, DeAndre Walker and Jalen, Fer you know what, Jalen Ferguson. I'm, I'm I'm a huge fan of him. He's six five, like two sixty five. Um, I mean, could you imagine a couple of years from now, Monte Sweat and Jalen Ferguson on opposite sides, and hopefully with Charles Harris rotating in and out. But oh, that would just be incredible to see those two rushing the quarterback. That would be perfect for. A, our hybrid scheme. Alrighty, so we've got two defensive ends and we've got two offensive linemen, so that's exactly what we need to be doing this year. I mean, if there is a wide receiver that they just do not want to miss the chance on, on drafting, to just go ahead and take him, you know. If there's a guy like a, a King Butler there or a AJ Brown and they just don't want to miss out on the talent, I'm not opposed to them doing that, to the Dolphins brass doing that. But but as you can see here, there's still some talented guys. David Sills, I'm a fan of him. Um, but yeah, we've built the trenches of the team and we've, you know, um, capitalized on the strength of the draft, which is defensive linemen. We've got Monte Sweat and Jalen Ferguson, so... Can't get much better than that. Okay, so oh, Brett Rippon's gone. I really would have loved to have him here in the fifth round. Um, so in the fifth round, what would want to get here? You know, maybe a receiver like a like a David Seals, um, tight end. Caleb Wilson's a pretty athletic guy. Offensive lineman. We don't need to look at any more offensive linemen. We'll have a quick look, but yeah, there's not much. No special guys left. Edge, no need to no need to grab an edge player. Terrell Hanks, hmm. I've heard good things about him, and he's got he's got good stats, but um, I really didn't like the way he tested. So, you know what? Let's go with David Seals. I mean, he he reminds me a lot of um. Cooper Cup, the receiver that the the Rams got a couple of years ago. You know, they're similar guys. They they're great at getting open. Uh, Cooper Cup, six two. Uh, David Seals, six three. David Seals, uh, an ex quarterback, so he's got that. You know, he's intelligent. So, and you can see that in the red zone, he does a tremendous job getting open. And just the last uh, couple of years for West Virginia, he caught like over thirty touchdowns from from Will Greer the last two years. So. He is great in the end zone, and that's exactly what we need moving forward. Um, 
whoever our future quarterback is, um, it's always great to have those guys, the guys that just have a knack for getting open, and Cooper Cup, he was just tremendous, uh, his rookie year, and um, I think he played eight games uh, in 2018, and then went down with a knee injury, but um, you always love to have the, those kind of guys on the team, guys that get open consistently, and uh, make the quarterback's job easier. So, obviously, here, we, we don't have a sixth-round pick. We traded that, I'm pretty sure, to the Cowboys for uh, Robert Quinn. So, um, we got two picks here in the seventh round. And um, pretty much at this point, they're going to be guys that can um, help out on special teams or maybe develop into rotational players in the future. Um, with, you know, guys like uh, Connell Armstrong, you're hoping that he can he can develop into something in the league. Uh, Jason Sanders is going to be maybe our starting kicker um, this year. I'm pretty sure, you know, Flores and uh, his new gang is going to want to um, bring in some kicking competition. So who who knows if Jason Sanders will win that? But he was a seventh round pick, so you can find you can find players here in the seventh round, and um, hopefully that's something that the Dolphins do this year. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and take linebacker uh, Bobby. Okariki, um, you know, obviously playing for Stan Stanford, he's probably a pretty um, smart uh, linebacker and a guy that can help out on special teams. Alrighty, and for the last pick here, David Long for, um, from Michigan. He definitely isn't going to go in the seventh round. He'll go maybe third round to fourth round, but, you know, he's there for us and we do need another corner. And uh, he falls into our lap here in the seventh round. And uh, yeah, these I've been taking these guys to a lot. These two guys a lot in the seventh round. And uh, you know, I think that'd be uh, that'd be great on the team. So that's it for the draft. Um, we've gone the four, first four picks. Um, we've gone very um, offensive line, defensive line heavy. But that's exactly the the teams. Um, our biggest needs at this point and I mean the best teams are the ones that are built from the trenches and you know the most responsible GMs the smartest uh, talent evaluators they know that you build a team from the inside out not from the outside in and uh, as you can see from this draft um, I've done exactly that Montez Sweat Elton Jenkins Titus Howard uh, Jalen Ferguson and then we got David Seals a great, um, you know, receiving target for the next four years, and then Bobby o Okariki and David Long, <laughs> who definitely isn't going to be going there in the seventh round. But that's it for this mock draft. Um, I mean, not as flashy as my, as my previous ones, but it really is what we need to be doing as a team. We really need to be building up our O line and D line, and uh, hopefully, you guys agree with um, this mock draft that I've put together. Uh, make sure to leave um, make sure to leave your comments give me your feedback you know let me know if I missed out some go if I missed out on some, on some players that, that you think should definitely be with the team and uh, if you if, if you agree with my strategy for the team so as always don't forget to like and subscribe and as always fins up baby I'll see you guys in the next one